I don't know how I got into it. It's, it's a sickness. You buy one and then you look, look for another one. I kind of enjoy the thrill of the hunt. I've got all I, I think I want at this time. I read an article in 2007 in uh, Tractor Shop magazine uh, about the 2010 uh, being made by John Deere. Some people think it's a lemon, and uh, that kind of intrigued me because everybody I've ever talked to said John Deere's the greatest. The John Deere 2010 was introduced in 1960 to replace the two-cylinder model 630 as a 45 horsepower tractor. It was part of John Deere's new line of tractors, the new generation series, that abandoned the old two-cylinder design. This new design with four and six cylinder engines caught some of the other tractor manufacturers by surprise, like International Harvester. Shortly after the 2010 was released, problems arose. These included issues with power steering, transmission, the power takeoff, and final drive. So why did these tractors have such major issues? It all depends who you ask. The engineers at Waterloo would tell you the Dubuque team was bad engineers. The Dubuque engineers claimed that all the funding went to the 3010 and 4010 series, leaving them short on funds to complete the 2010 series. By 1963, all these major issues with the 2010 were corrected. John Deere went on to make 55,000 Model 2010s during their production run. In 1965, the tractors were replaced with new and improved 2020 models. I grew up on propanes with my father, and his father had propane tractors before him. I never thought I'd find one, I just thought it was a neat article. I found this tractor on Craigslist in, uh, I think, 2014, and it was down in Oklahoma, and it was in pretty sad shape, and I thought, well, it's something I could get and take, uh, take apart, and I'd work on it a little bit, and the kids would help me shine on it a little, and, and we'd talk about getting it running someday. I did get it free. Uh, it was stuck, and I think I let it soak almost a year. It just kept getting more complicated, and I split it myself, and the input shaft, uh, the splines were gone. And I said, this is getting a little more complicated than I can handle. Quite a few years before that, I'd talked to Kent Jansen about restoring a tractor for me, and he said, well, we have quite a waiting list. And one day he called me after I had tore this down and said, your name's coming up on our list. I said, but the tractor that I originally mentioned to you, I think maybe now I'd like to do this John Deere 2010. His words were, well, I'd have to look at it, but are you sure you want to do a 2010? And I said, well, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. And he said, you know, they don't have the best reputation of being one of John Deere's tractors. And I said, I, I understand, but let's do it. <laughs> well, they weren't, well, I don't think they were John Deere's best tractors. Now, years ago, there were a couple of them around here, and one of them guy had one, and he actually then, Really good luck with it. Now, it wasn't a propane, it was gas, but it was 2010 utility. And I think he farmed with it for, from when he bought it till when he quit. And he really had pretty good luck with it. He had some experience with that. But the engine's the same as like a 45 combine and maybe a 40. And we, we had quite a bit of experience with them engines. But the other stuff is this power steering on it, similar to a lot of other brands of tractors. It's just in a different configuration. So that's, you know, just something we were pretty familiar with. And, Oh, it's just got a lot of John Deere in it. And we work on a lot of different brands of tractors and you kind of work on John Deere's for a while. You kind of get a feel for how John Deere built stuff and work on internationals. And then sometimes you work on something else on it. Well, why did they do this or why did they do that? But And so I brought it down in pieces. While it was soaking and I was tearing it apart, I was looking for pieces and parts. So I pretty well had about all the parts we needed and that was I think very helpful to him because he would call me and say we need this and I'd say I think I have it. The Jansons did a frame up restoration. They started with the transmission housing and slowly put the tractor together, rebuilding it as they went. The final result is a beautifully restored tractor that runs as good as it looks. This 2010 is powered by a 144 cubic inch four-cylinder LP gas engine that can do 39 horsepower on the draw bar and 46 horsepower on the PTO. I wanted uh, my children to uh, be interested in tractors like I was, but we don't really have a lot of farm ground. So I wanted to start getting them enthused so we go to tractor shows and, and Timothy here uh, really likes the John Deere brand. On Sunday mornings, we always drive through the local dealer's lot as we eat a breakfast sandwich on our way to church. So 
I told him he could have the 2010 and that made him pretty excited. And we didn't plan on it this way, but he was actually born in 2010. So we think that's kind of neat. It's a small size, easy to haul, because we, we kind of haul them instead of doing a lot of roading to the fields when they're a good distance. I like the idea of propane in that it burns clean, the engines stay clean. And some of our other tractors, we, we may not start them for a year, sometimes two years. And we can just put a battery back in them and open the valves and they start right up with no old fuel and the carburetors aren't gummed up. I think they're just pretty efficient tractors. I think that they were ahead of their time back then. A lot, a lot of people like the propane fuel. We're going to uh, maybe take it to a few local shows, uh, but we also want to use it to rake hay. And as he gets older, I want to teach him to drive a, a stick shift or a clutch. His grandma bales a lot of hay, and so we've got a three-point bale mover for the back of it. And as he gets older, I want him to be able to gather the bales and bring them to the end of the field. Every time I've talk, told somebody we're restoring one, they kind of look at us and say, why would you want to do that? They, I've been told you either love them or you hate them. There's no in-between. <laughs>